I want you to learn how to tell yourself how you're really feeling. I want you to be so dialed into your emotional self, right? I feel bloated today. I'm feeling insecure in this outfit. I'm feeling lazy lying here on the couch. I'm feeling guilty for eating all that food, right? When you're able to describe your true emotion like that, you're learning to tap into the power of understanding your true emotion. When you can do that, you have a starting point to move yourself up the emotional ladder. So with the right tools, you can take yourself from feeling guilty from eating all the food to accepting the circumstance of what just happened. You're listening to the Stop Dieting Forever podcast, episode 138. What if it were possible to achieve your goal weight and stay there permanently without dieting? Welcome to the Stop Dieting Forever podcast, where you will discover the key components that most diets won't tell you because they want you to keep coming back. Not here. This is your last stop on the weight loss struggle bus. I am your host, Jennifer Dent Brown, life and weight loss coach, and I am going to show you how to stop dieting forever. Let's jump into today's episode. Hey, Lux Lifer, welcome to another episode of the Stop Dieting Forever podcast. I am your host, Jennifer Dent Brown, certified health and life coach. And I am thrilled that you are spending this time with me now. I am in the closet (laughs) doing one of my favorite things, talking to you via this podcast. So let's talk about feeling fat, shall we? Mm -hmm. Now, I know the term fat, and I'm using air quotes, is not politically correct, right? Because fat has a negative connotation. Society has taught us, the patriarchy, that fat is a bad thing. You know, if you want to insult someone, you call them fat. If you want to make yourself feel badly, you call yourself fat. But I want you to pay attention to this, and I want you to understand this. The physical fat stored on our bodies is not an emotion, and therefore it is not something that we can feel. Do you understand that? Fat isn't an emotion, and it's not a feeling. So when you say, I'm feeling fat, just know that that is a script that you have been socialized to follow because you're wanting to describe usually a negative state of being. Feeling fat has nothing to do with the scale. Hear me now when I tell you. Feeling fat, right? It's like this Band-Aid term, And it doesn't really express how you're feeling. It doesn't really get to the core of what's going on in your head. All you're doing is when you say, I feel fat, is that you're reinforcing this negative self-image, right? This negative body talk. And negative body talk is never a good idea when you're trying to lose weight because it will never help you achieve your weight loss goal. So... I know you want to learn how to stop dieting forever, which is why you're listening to the podcast. If you desire to not just lose weight any way that you can, but you really want to create a healthy lifestyle, you really want to just be healthy. Being healthy means having a relationship between your brain and your body and not being so disconnected, right? You're disconnected when you say phrases like, I feel fat. And that's not really how you're feeling. If you want to create this healthy lifestyle, you've got to change your language. You've got to learn how to change your language. And you have to learn how to use your emotions. I like to call it emotional literacy. So if your brain insists on telling you that it feels fat, I want you to just stop and question, what does that really mean for you? Let's just dig into that phrase for a second. If you're feeling fat, you actually may be feeling bloated, right? Your clothes may not be fitting comfortably. You may be feeling physically uncomfortable in your skin, right? That's bloated. That is not feeling fat. You actually may be feeling sluggish. You may be feeling lazy or lethargic. 
But instead of using a more precise term like lazy or lethargic, it's just easy to say, ah, I feel fat while you're laying on the couch flipping through the channels. You actually may be feeling insecure. You may not be happy with the way that you look when you look in the mirror in that moment. And in that moment, you're just dissatisfied with your own reflection. We've all seen images of the woman getting dressed, looking in the full-length mirror at herself, like with this quizzical, scrunched-up look on her face. And she asked her husband or whoever's in the room, honey, do I look fat in this? That's not feeling fat. That's just feeling insecure, right? You may be actually feeling guilty for overeating, right? So we all have been in this scenario after you eat a big, fatty, rich meal and you're feeling bloated and you might just say, oh, I'm feeling fat. But really, you're feeling shameful because you ate too much food. You're feeling guilty because you overate or you're just actually feeling physically bloated but you're not feeling fat. So do you see how we can use that phrase, I feel fat, to cover so many different emotions? And it just like is not useful to use this Band-Aid phrase and not actually be specific about what we're really feeling. I get it, right? I have used that phrase before in my life plenty of times, and there is no doubt in my mind that telling ourselves that we feel fat is powerful. And Sometimes it's really overwhelming. It's an overwhelming story that we're telling ourselves because there is like despair attached to that phrase of, oh my God, I feel so fat. But here's the thing, y'all. When you continue to mislabel emotions that you find uncomfortable, you end up associating your feeling with a negative bodily experience. And one of the problems we have when we're struggling with our weight is that we don't love and accept our bodies as they are. So when we're trying to lose weight and you're unable to accept your body because you're using all of these negative emotions, you end up creating this negative bodily experience no matter what you do. And that, my friends, will always slow down your weight loss. It will always slow down your weight loss. And this is why emotional literacy is so important. Learning how to be clear about how you're feeling in the moment literally is a game changer. Because what do you do, right, when you say to yourself or you're thinking, oh, I feel fat? You hide your body. You ruminate on how, quote unquote, big you feel. You shame yourself. You have the F it and eat it moments, right? You continue to feel hopeless. Or maybe you're trying drastic measures to feel better. So you do crazy things to like not feel fat anymore. You avoid getting on the scale. You turn down invitations because you don't want to go out because you don't want to get dressed. You don't want anybody to see you. You become less active. So when you're telling yourself, you feel fat, I feel fat, I feel fat, or you're even sharing that with someone else, like, girl, I feel so fat. What you're doing is you're stopping or you're just hindering your weight loss, period. You're just slowing down your progress or you're not even allowing yourself to lose weight. And then you're training your brain to believe that fat is a feeling and it's not. You're not allowing yourself to understand how you're really feeling. I want you to learn how to tell yourself how you're really feeling. I want you to be so dialed into your emotional self, right? I feel bloated today. I'm feeling insecure in this outfit. I'm feeling lazy lying here on the couch. I'm feeling guilty for eating all that food. When you're able to describe your true emotion like that, you're learning to tap into the power of understanding your true emotion. When you can do that, this is why this is important, y'all. You have a starting point to move yourself up the emotional ladder. So with the right tools, you can take yourself from feeling bloated to feeling fluffy. I love that term fluffy. I got that from one of my coach friends, Jenny Blake. She's a weight loss and like strength training coach. And she doesn't say, I feel fat. She's like, nope, we're just feeling fluffy. Okay, so you're taking yourself from feeling bloated to feeling fluffy. With the right tools, 
to understand your emotional literacy, you can take yourself from feeling insecure to feeling honest about how you're looking. You can take yourself from feeling lazy to feeling relaxed. You can take yourself from feeling guilty from eating all the food to accepting the circumstance of what just happened. But when you tell yourself you feel fat, where do you go from there? Right? Are you going to take yourself from you feel fat to I feel skinny? <laughs> no, because skinny isn't a feeling either. So I have to tell you, I didn't become emotionally literate until I started coaching. And I realized how much emotions drive our habits, the good ones and the bad ones. I knew if I wanted to change my habits to create permanent weight loss, not just temporary weight loss, because I was very good at that, but I wanted to get off of that yo-yo cycle, that yo-yo weight cycle, in order for me to change my habits to create a permanent weight loss, it was the only thing that I hadn't learned how to do. I had to figure out how I was really feeling in the moment. Before that, I had no idea what emotions were. I mean, I knew what they were, but I didn't know that I needed to work on them in this way. And so my brain was very resistant at first. But when I listened to the people who were living the life that I aspired to, when I listened to my mentors talk about their emotions and in the way that they spoke about experiencing all of the emotions, and processing emotions. I was like, ah, dang, this is something I need to work on because this is the only thing. I'm doing everything else that they're doing, but I haven't done this whole emotional thing yet. So I knew that that was the work that I needed to do. And so I did, right? I increased my emotional literacy. I learned how to be very specific about how I'm feeling. I learned how to be, how to process negative emotions. I learned how certain emotions just slowed me down in really, really big ways. So I understand now the power and the importance of understanding your emotions. So I added emotional literacy to the Stop Dieting Forever weight loss process. It's a crucial part of the weight loss process when you think about it. Because if you don't know exactly what the emotions are that are driving you to eat, And when you're struggling with your weight, it's only because you're consuming too much food. So if you don't understand the reasons and what emotions are driving you to eat when you eat, you don't know what to focus on changing. This is why y'all get so excited about, yeah, I'm going to go train for a marathon and lose the weight. Or yeah, I'm going to just start eating pre-prepared meals out of the Nutrisystem box. And oh, yes, I'm going to start using this app. I'm going to lose all the weight. You don't know what to focus on changing. What you really want to focus on, instead of doing all of those drastic measures, what you really want to focus on is the cause of why you're overweight. You really want to understand the cause of your overeating, period. And that is just a habit that is driven by a set of emotions. 99.9% of the population was like me before I increased my emotional literacy. I mean, when I think about it, this is the missing component for most traditional diets. And y'all, I have done every single diet on the planet. I dieted for decades. I would lose some weight, and then I would gain it right back. I would go find another diet, I would lose some weight, and I would gain it back, plus some more. No one taught me about emotions. If you're trying to follow a traditional diet, no one's going to teach you how to identify how you're really feeling. I ain't seen no keto book, diet, blog post, article, nothing about keto that says anything about emotional eating. You can cut out carbs all you want, but you can emotionally overeat bacon, right? You can be driven by your emotions to overeat or overdrink bulletproof coffee. Yes, it conforms to the keto lifestyle, but anything that you consume in excess is going to lead to weight gain, right? Or is going to at the very least hinder your weight loss. 
So none of these traditional diets are going to help you understand your emotional state when you're overeating. None of them are going to tell you how important emotions are to your weight loss success. But y'all, I am a diet industry disruptor. (laughs) So I'm telling all the secrets because I want you to stop giving your money away to the diet industry and trying to do all these quick fixes to lose weight. Telling all the secrets. And my clients are seeing incredible success with their weight loss and they are keeping it off. I have success stories of women who have kept their weight off for two plus years. So listen, the next time you catch yourself saying you feel fat, I want you to go back and listen to this podcast, episode 138. You can save it or just take some notes. I want you to remember Jennifer's saying that Feeling fat is not useful and that there is something else that you need to do instead. And that something else is to be very clear how you're really feeling. All right. If you've done all the things and you realize that you could improve your emotional literacy, then I want you to come join us inside Stop Dieting Forever. This is the important transformational work that we do. We go beyond the quick weight loss tricks. And we transform our lives in the process. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. So come create your healthiest body yet inside Stop Dieting Forever. Your life, I'm telling you, will change in the best way. All right, y'all. Stop telling yourself you're feeling fat. And if you hear your daughters and your nieces and your granddaughters saying that they feel fat, I want you to send them this podcast or you tell them. You do not feel fat. Fat is not a feeling. How are you really feeling in this moment, honey? How are you really feeling? And allow them to get in touch with their true emotions. All right, y'all. I could go on forever to talk about this topic. (laughs) Live Lux, and I will see you in the next episode. If you liked today's episode of the Stop Dieting Forever podcast, and you want to learn more about creating a lifestyle instead of following a diet to lose weight permanently, be sure to visit jenniferdent.com. There, you'll learn more about my unique weight loss process and how it can work for you. Go to jenniferdent.com to discover what you can do to stop dieting forever.